Alright guys, hello and welcome. My name is Guru Pathy. Today I'm going to be talking about the basics of the safe lane tri-lane. Um, I feel like this is a really important video and I got a really good replay of a game where we executed the safe lane tri-lane in a pretty good way and so I really just want to talk about this because I feel like uh, you know learning how to do the safe lane properly can win you a lot of games I think. And So in this game we're going to actually have a safe lane tri-lane of Wraith King, Disruptor, and Potom. And this is kind of like your ideal sort of format for a tri-lane. You can do this a variety of different ways. I'm on my player perspective right now. But in general, when you do a safe lane tri-lane, you want to have at least one range support, because that support's usually going to be kind of like the zoner of the lane. Um, and it's usually easier if you're a ranged hero, though it's okay if you're not. Uh, you also want to have a roaming type hero, because tri-lanes are dissolvable. It's not like you want to put three heroes in a lane and then just leave them there, but uh, you want to basically win the lane so hard that your roamer can then leave and go do other things. And then of course you want to carry, right? Because somebody's got to take advantage of the fact that you made space in this lane for someone to farm. So you got to have someone who uses the farm well. So in this game, I'm going to be playing Wraith King, and I'm going to be taking the farm. And uh, Potom's kind of filling that roaming role, and then Disruptor is going to kind of fill that like zoning, range support sort of hero role. And you can really build tri-lanes a variety of different ways. You know, uh, because we have a little bit more of an aggressive carry in that I have a stun, we, put, we took a little bit greedier of a uh, support uh, in the Disruptor. Because Disruptor kind of needs a few levels before he comes online. And, you know, Potom's a good roamer here, but there's tons of combinations, like mix and match, you know? If you've got a Spectre, for instance, maybe you want a hero that's a little bit less level dependent, and a little bit better at zoning, you know, like the Skywrath Mages or the Witch Doctors of the world. Um, but those heroes fall off a little harder, don't do as well with farm, although Witch Doctor Ags is pretty good. So maybe he's not the best example, but Skywrath is a very good example, because that hero does nothing in the late game versus BKBs, unless he gets massively, like, tons and tons of kills in the mid game. But then you also kind of want like that roamer role in the Marana because you're going to dissolve the tri-lane at some point. So this role could be like a Pudge, a Spirit Breaker, a Potom, an Ogre, like lots of heroes can roam. Uh, so I'm not going to like limit that. But big thing you notice, first thing I do, get out to lane. What's the purpose of this? right? I'm getting out here because I'm trying to deny the offlaner from putting down a ward anywhere, right? Like ideally I don't want him putting him on this camp, but I do want him putting it somewhere in this area uh, such that it just gets dewarded. Even if I can see it, it's not a big deal. But I get out here, no one's here, right? Undying is a little bit slow on the pickup. He didn't get out of his base in time. So big thing, get out of your base early and often, right? That's the one of the biggest things. You can see disruptors out here too. Um, when you're talking about support items, most of the time in the safe lane tri-lane, you want to be building a lot of regen. And like this game, I went for a lot of regen. I have a little less gold because we wasted time to pick. I actually first picked Race King this game, hence why there's a Quaspex Invoker, a Mana Draining Lion, and then an Undying who's like, whatever, I'll show up to the lane and bully this Wraith King. So I got kind of counterpicked this game. Uh, items for your supports though. Supports are usually going to spend some of the wards. Uh, Disruptor is a little richer because he randomed. And that's fine. And then the bottom also is a little bit richer. The only thing, the only comment I'll make about the support items is they should have a set of sentries to deward the offlaner's ward or to deward de the top lane. But that's like the only thing that I could say about their items. They just went a little bit greedier. And I think you'll find that a lot in games, but I almost always buy sentries. That's my deal. And so now what happens is we end up contesting the top rune, and this kind of ends up being a misplay by me, but Disruptor gets a really nice ward out in the lane early. And so what this allows me to do is it essentially allows me to roam to the rune and maybe create a fight, right? Because if somebody's here to see where Undying places his ward or prevent him from placing his ward where he wants to, then I'm allowed to sort of contest the rune. And since I'm a little bit better at level 1 than at the rune than uh, Disruptor is, then it ends up working out for the team. So here we get the ward down. Undying shows up a little bit late to lane. And as an offlaner, there's really two times you want to get that ward down. The first time is right when the rune spawns, because the supports will likely rotate to the rune to help there. And the other time is right at the beginning of the game. And so those are your two windows, and if you miss those two windows, you really can't get a good ward out. So he ends up dropping a really crummy ward that blocks the camp. 
but he does it under our ward and we see him and we get a free kill here. So like this is kind of the idea of the safe lane tri lane is you don't want anybody coming up to this lane. You don't want anybody to think that you want them to think that this lane isn't safe. And so now Lion shows up because they thought that the Lion Undying would be a good off lane. And here, I kind of trust my supports to be able to handle a lion by themselves. And what I'm waiting for is if Undying TPs into this lane, then I'll show up and come fight. But we'll go back 10 seconds and we'll kind of watch this, what happens from their perspective. Or we'll watch it from the Disruptor's perspective. Because, like you can see, I thought about going to help this lion. But if I'm not farming, then no one's taking advantage of this lane. Potom hits a really nice arrow onto the tower, and lion ends up going down. So you can see, supports both of them. The roamer and the support start in the lane, and they start by zoning. They want to put into the mind of this lion, put into the mind of this undying, that this lane is not safe for them to come to. And meanwhile, I'm just free farming the lane. And what you'll notice about the way that I'm free farming is that I'm farming in such a way that I'm not pushing the wave at all. This is called static farming. Uh, static because you're not moving the wave at all. And you can see I even give up last hits sometimes. Because Wraith King has a really slow animation, and here I'm like telling my disruptor, please help me. That's what this ping is. Because I'm worried the wave is going to push. So again, the two offlaners show up together this time, and they decide to fight. What you'll see now is at this point, there's a level advantage, right? In that my hero is level 2, basically. And these guys, you know, they have a little bit extra gold because they got a couple of early kills, and so now it's really hard for them to fight us. Level 1 Tombstone does nothing, we focus down the lion, he ends up dying. But what you'll see is that because I managed the lane so well, I end up coming back to a lane that hasn't moved at all. And that's the goal of static farming. You want to be able to leave your lane and then come back to it and have the lane not move at all, right? So back to static farming. And you can see, we're not pushing this wave at all. And again, where are my supports? Right? Zoning the Undying. And so now we're starting to hit a situation where I'm level 2, my Disruptor is level 2, my Potom's level 2, we've gotten 3 kills, I'm now free farming the lane, and the Undying, who is level 1, is like, well, what do I do? Right? Like, he's in a really tough situation. And as long as I don't push this wave, there's almost nothing for him to do. He shows up in the lane. We got Glimpse on Disruptor now. Glimpse him right back in the lane, and he's dead. Right? This is actually really nice. I'm body blocking him as I'm attacking him, and it ends up kind of being the reason we get the kill. I'll replay this again. But watch this. So I move in front of him. Block. Move. Block. Move. And I end up getting one extra auto attack off. And that's the reason he ends up dying. Now Potom shows up, gets the kill. Because Potom's like, can't let you have kills in the safe lane. I've gotta steal those. I wanna be a carry. But uh, we didn't actually need Potom to show up there. And so now what happens is we've killed this safe lane four times, and it's all been because we've been in good positions from the very start of the game. By the very start of the game, I mean sub 30 seconds before the game even started. We were, Disruptor and I were both out there ready to fight that Undying. And so now what happens? is the, the safe lane tri lane dissolves and what i mean by that is the roamer is now free to do whatever the roamer wants at two minutes right this roamer has accomplished what they should have in the safe lane which is secure it and now the roamer is going to make the mid lane hell for the invoker right and this is what i mean by having a tri lane of disposable parts a lot of games what you're going to see is you're going to see the you know we pick a tri lane and then everybody comes and stands here and it's like yay boys we're tri laning you know and it's that's not a tri lane right yeah there's three heroes there but you're not allocating resources in a way that makes sense or is good for the game or having any impact you're kind of just wasting two heroes potential just sitting behind this tri lane even if it kind of looks good on paper so you know that's not that's not a tri lane is a group of pieces or parts that can move around right and so take advantage of that as undying is literally lost for what to do he has no idea where to go he's level one sitting on his tower like at this point he's basically thinking we lost and undying can't do anything and that's that's what you want to do 
Uh, that's the purpose of a safe lane trilane, is to keep this offlaner level 1 forever, and making him feel like he can't do anything to impact this game. Here I am, just happily farming, right? Where are both of my supports? Bottoms, annoying mid, well, annoying bottom now, and disruptor, like, I don't know what disruptor was doing. He was also mid. So, like, my supports are free to roam because of how scared this Undying is. And we have a lane ward, so if he shows up in that lane, all that's going to happen is he's just going to die. Right? And so here, Undying kind of makes a move up. Right? Again, lane equilibrium is maintained such that I can leave this lane whenever I want to. And I can just come back and it'll always be in this position. Right? Now I'm pushing a little bit. So I make sure the wave's even out, I miss the last hit there. But Undying is where... Oh, Undying went back. Where did he go? I thought he was walking up for the rune. No, he ended up walking back. But you can see, like, I want to keep the equilibrium such that I can leave and go fight their offlaner if, I, if need be, and then come back to the lane that's fine for me. So we're going to fast forward a little bit, because I feel like, you know, what you're basically going to watch me do is you're going to watch me farm a Midas. And uh, Disruptor is kind of going to do other things. Oh, this is a good point too. So once the offlaner has left the lane, you want to start maximizing experience on your support. Let's see, he doesn't end up doing anything here. He wants to pull. He will pull in a minute. But I'm just farming. Like, Disruptor's kind of at a loss for what to do. Here it is. So, now that the Undying has left this lane, and he's been gone for a little while, this Disruptor wants to pull. He's watching bottom. So, but he's going to pull this wave. And so he tells me that he's going to pull this wave, and what I end up doing is I end up denying the wave out a little bit. He lets one creep through, which is fine. Ends up working out really well. But instead of letting this creep wave push into the tower, right what I end up doing is I end up tanking the wave here and the goal of this is I know he's single pulled he told me that he was single pulling and a single pull isn't enough to kill the wave but what ends up happening is disruptor gets a bunch of experience from this single pull and then we keep the creepy equilibrium where we want in the lane right that's what you want to do you don't want to pull at the start of the game you want to pull once you've already won the lane or you've lost the lane right it's 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 a resource for supports to get experience and levels like a carry player really i don't care if you pull at all most of the time because it doesn't affect me any way shape or form it's good for the supports and so as a support player right you got to be thinking about when's the right time to pull and so here I get a five and a half minute Midas up, six minute Midas, we'll call it. Uh, mostly because I missed five or six last hits in the first minute. But 32 CS, 20 denies, like absolutely destroying the last hit chart. And, you know, the net worth is crazy in my favor. Granted, Void's doing really well in his lane. That's fine. Not a big deal. It's not the point of this replay. We're talking about the safe lane try lane. But again, just keeping the equilibrium where it is. My supports are off doing whatever they want, like Disruptor's helping bottom, Potom's fighting bottom, you got TA fighting the level 1 Undying, like, there's nothing for that Undying to do this game, he is super lost. And again, more farming, so let's speed this up. So what ends up happening is, I end up saying, hey, I've got enough core items online that I can actually go jungle. And this is something that's really common among safe lane carries, is that once you hit a point where you have enough items to where you can leave the lane, you kind of want to reward greedy supports uh, that helped you get to this point with the lane, right? And so what I end up doing is I end up saying, yo Disruptor, take the lane, get your level 6 online early, get an early arcane boots, right? I don't end up saying all those things, I just say, yo Disruptor, come take this experience. but. What ends up happening is now I'm going to go off into the jungle and Disruptor is now the safe lane carry, right? And, you know, this is warded, whatever. But what ends up happening is I end up farming and this whole time Disruptor is now managing the equilibrium of the lane 
And this is one thing that like really bothers me when I see this online or see this in forums, especially on Reddit, where it's like, I don't need to learn to play other roles. But this disruptor knows how to play carry, right? And what I mean by that is he knows how to manage equilibrium in such a way that um, that he can maintain the equilibrium given the situation that he is the safe lane farmer. And it works out really well for him. And all we're waiting for is whenever this Undying decides to show back up in the lane, we'll just show up and kill him. But until he does, we have dissolved the tri-lane, right? We are farming the Disruptor, we are still roaming the bottom bottom, and then we are, you know, farming me in the jungle. And what ends up happening is disrupt the Undying gets a little bold here, because he sees that it's a solo Disruptor, and he ends up coming up trying to get a couple of last hits. Uh, one thing that I don't do very well as a player, is something I want to be working on, is this uh, Undying has actually been leeching experience for a little while. And if we go back, we'll go back, we'll say 40 seconds. Go from this Undying's perspective. Like, this Undying has actually sneaked up here. And he did it when uh, our lane ward disappeared. So I'm going to 4x this. But our lane ward disappeared, see? Because it's around 7 minutes. And this guy, being a smart guy, understands that the lane ward was probably there and was probably about to despawn around that time. So what he does is he sneaks up here, he hides in the trees, and he gets experience. And so one thing you want to be doing as a safe lane tri-laner, somebody in the tri-lane should be doing this. I recommend you do it every single one of your games. But like, you should be checking their levels. At this point, right, Undying is level 2 which means that he's getting experience from somewhere. And so you gotta ask the question, where is that experience coming from, right? Is it coming from the mid lane? No, he's not showing there. Is it coming from the safe lane? No, he's not showing there. Are they pulling bottom? Like this would be a question where I'd ask my loft laner, like are they pulling? Where is this experience coming from? Because I could know that he was in the trees if I was just paying attention to the scoreboard. So this is like a small thing. Uh, but once you've won the lane, you wanna be thinking about scoreboard. Just pull it up every 30 seconds. Like, has the level on the offlaner changed? If we had known that, then maybe we could have caught this undying a little bit early, earlier. But what ends up happening because of that is that he basically gets to level three. I think he almost gets to level four because of it. So we give two levels to the offlaner, mostly because we're not checking the scoreboard. So undying shows back up, and I just end up rotating to try and kill him because again. When the offlaner is there, the tri-lane reassembles. In this case, it's just a dual lane because it only requires me and the disruptor to kill him. And we basically get a free kill on this Undying. Undying drops his tomb here, runs to the north, likely gonna try to pick up a TP, so I ignore the tomb and let disruptor focus it, run up, get the stun, get a nice kill again. Right? Your tri-lane's not always gonna look like this in pub games. And I would say, you know, of the pub games that I play, uh, I would say 20% of them we have an executed, like, well safe lane. Uh, or a safe lane that is executed well. So it's a little bit rare. But definitely something you want to be thinking about. And now what we've reached is we've reached the 10 minute mark. Or almost reached the 10 minute mark. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the scoreboard and sort of show you the game. And this is mostly what what you want to be seeing when you're looking at a safe lane tri lane is an 0 and 2, 0 and 1 low level off laner who's essentially a support now with high level supports, high level carry and a roamer who's been able to get into the game, helped out the mid lane. The mid lane's doing really well because it's essentially been a 2v1 from two and a half minutes on. Like this is how you win games. All right, before I end this video, a couple of things I want to talk about. There's a couple other things I want to mention about this replay. But what you'll notice now is that we've also rotated the tri-lane to where Potom is now the safe lane farmer in the tri-lane. And so do you see what's happening in this game, right? Do you see how interchangeable the roles can be? And do you see how we're taking advantage, maximizing our farm, right? Disruptor got his arcane boots online. He got a TP, he was able to buy wards, has tons of gold. And meanwhile, now Potom, who achieved a lot of roaming in the mid game, is now allowed to farm up items to where she can transition to a little bit of a semi-carry and still the carry is farming. Last thing I'm going to say about this video is, you know, as I'm farming this jungle, I see an opportunity to join a teamfight bottom, 
because I feel like I'm really strong right now, and I feel like as a team we're pretty strong. Uh, Disruptor is, is calling for a team fight bottom, you know, I've got a Midas, I'm going to use my Midas, and I basically just end up TPing to try and defend this tier 1. And, you know, this fight, we're not going to necessarily talk about this fight, I go on a bad target because I'm dumb, and they get a really nice chrono, they kill our Disruptor. We don't necessarily lose this fight, but it's not the greatest fight for us. But what you need to be paying attention to is on the minimap what's happening, right? This offlaner has not been able to get anything, and now at 11 minutes he finally gets the opportunity to get a couple of last hits, that little bit of experience, right? The lane is becoming easy for him, he is finally able to do something, but oh wait, I'm in Undying, I need to be helping my team in mid-game teamfights, right? Offlaners in general are these heroes that are mid-game teamfighters or mid-game dominators or essentially just heroes that do things in the mid-game. And when this hero, like, he can't afford to farm now, even though there's space top, he's got to come and try to help his team bottom, right? This is why, like, in pro games, you don't see Undying in the offlane, right? Every single offlane in a pro game has something to fall back on, right? And that's why I get mad when I see, you know, the Necrolites of the offlane, because uh, 4Ks think Necrolite's a great dual offlaner, and he's okay. He's actually terrible, I hate it. But the, the point is that, like... In general, offlaners have something to fall back on, right? Darkseer can jungle. Doom can jungle, right? Um, Clockwork doesn't necessarily need a lot, but he can manipulate creep aggro, right? Earth Spirit. M uh, Earth Spirit and Earth Shaker can manipulate creep aggro. Tiny can throw aggro, right? Tons of little things like that. So, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something about the safe lane tri lane, and thanks for watching.